Hi again. I uh, noticed that I jumped over um, a really a, a part in the first in the first paragraph of the second letter um, that is just too juicy to pass up. This this part of the letter is just the cat's meow. It really summarizes the deception, the literary deception that this letter um, is before the United Nations. So I'm going to read that this last part of the first paragraph and then just make a quick comment to attach to the first video. It says, um, the majority voluntarily territorial. In 1833, in 1833, the territorial borders of the Republic of Argentina did not include the geographical southern half of its present form, nor any territory in the Falkland Islands, Antarctica or South Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands. That I mentioned before also. Um, I don't know why it mentions Antarctica, because the British did not were not present in Antarctica either. Um, I don't know when they maybe had a ship go by or sight the continent, the Spanish did as well. Several explorers, I believe, sighted uh, Antarctica, but I'm not exactly sure of the years. But it starts preparing the reader, the reader, the reader, uh, with ideas that have to do with uh, look at how 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 uh, much Argentina is trying to grab, while at the same time it establishes its its, its own um, rapport with Antarctica. So for some reason, it feels it needs to introduce uh, Antarctica in this in, in the last bit of this paragraph. And this is the part that I didn't talk about before, which is really good. The land that now forms the Argentine province of Tierra del Fuego, of which uh, the Republic of Argentina purportedly claims the Falcon Islands to form part of, this is true, the subsequently Argentine governments um, decided that their... Uh, the Malvinas Islands, or and the the claim of the Malvinas Islands, belongs to the southernmost province of Tierra del Fuego. Uh, but this happened after much, much after 1833. I believe it was even perhaps after the 1900s, sometime. Um, I didn't. It doesn't matter the actual the precise year in which the Argentin Argentinians decided to make, to call it part of uh, Tierra del Fuego, which was, became part of Argentina some years after the creation of the nation. Now, I already explained before that the Falklands started with Argentina as part of Buenos Aires. Yet, what they're saying here is, uh, well, first it, 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 it uh, describes this. It says that uh, the Argentinians have made Tierra del Fuego part, uh, the Malvinas part of Tierra del Fuego until approximately half a century after 1833, which means 1850. I didn't know it was that early, um, but it could be. By which time... The current Falkland Islands people had lived and raised two generations already on the islands. British sovereignty over the Falkland Islands dates back to 1765, some years before the Republic of Argentina even existed. They really rushed and crammed that in, and it ended up being just a, a cacophony of, of fabrication. It's unbelievable. This last little bit is just incredible. First of all, what are they trying to achieve by saying that um, Argentina only started calling the Malvinas part of... Uh, uh, in other words, they are suggesting, what they're suggesting is that Argentina only officially started claiming the Malvinas as part of its country when they incorporated the islands to Tierra del Fuego in the 1900s or whenever. And why are they even mentioning that? They're trying to, it makes no, it actually makes no sense, even to the, 
to the diplomats reading this letter. So, so they decided to, uh, you know, to officially make it part of Tierra del Fuego um, after Buenos Aires, you know, after it being part of uh, Buenos Aires' jurisdiction. Um, so, in other words, they're trying to use Argentina's, um, you know, attempts at giving some officiality, that uh, some bureau bureaucratic uh, cr um, competitiveness um, in, in, form, in form of definitions and documents uh, against them, against themselves. They're trying to use Argentina's uh, idea of, of making the islands part of Tierra del Fuego instead of Buenos Aires, uh, which occurred in the late 1800s, according to this, this letter, as a reason why they uh, started to claim late and that uh, the Falklanders were already there. The Falklanders were brought to the islands after the expulsion of the Argentinians, like I explained before. And so it, I don't understand. It's it's really hard. They're tr what they're tr how they're trying to read if you know shovel things around and use uh, things that Argentina has done as a way of turning it again, turning it against uh, themselves. To me, it's uh, just uh, just a waste of ink that they actually to you know to anybody that kind of thinks it through a little bit. Um, and so they're trying to say that Argentina came in late, and by that time the islanders were already uh, being born on the islands. Well, you know, isn't this a way of trying to substitute? the narrative that Argentinians, the truth about Argentinians actually being born, actual people of Argentine citizenship under Argentine administration, being born on the islands already 11 years before any islander arrived, any of today's islander arrived. Um, so then, it, and it, it finishes by saying, uh, British sovereignty over the Falkland Islands dates back to 1765. It's a lie. That is just a lie. Because you can't have sovereignty if you do not establish your settlement in some kind of, with some kind of permanent character. Uh, sovereignty over islands can be claiming the islands from the other side of the world, uh, attempting to establish a fort which gets uh, uh, kicked out uh, off the islands by the by the Spanish who are claiming to have true right over the Malvinas, uh, not winning that dispute, just sort of retreating for fifty years, um, not sending any form of attempt to establish to settle to build, to do anything, and how much administrative uh, literature is there in London uh, regarding this, uh, regarding the Falklands? I mean, there are, uh, you know, Lord Falkland, whatever, named uh, after, you know, this person or that person entered the, you know, landed on the beach or uh, crossed the strait, or, but there isn't any uh, the Spanish uh, and the Argentinians did name governors specifically to the islands. Um, the British never talk about how uh, the Falklands existed in the running of their empire, and probably because it was a lot weaker than what was actually going on regarding the Spanish and the Argentinians during that time. I don't know for sure, because... It's something that is not talked about and not developed, but uh, there is material that that speaks of the Spanish building a church, the Argentinians settling with Vernet and building housing and bringing cattle, and all before the British came back to, uh, now that the Spanish were no longer a problem, 
to take him from the Argentinians as an easy grab because they no longer had to confront the Spanish about the island. Um, and yet they have the audacity to say that sovereignty, as, as one would understand purely and wholly the, uh, the definition of sovereignty, dates back to 1765. Not true. This, what dates back to 1765 is a colonial empire that was sailing around the world saying this will be ours and the queen wants or the king wants this to be ours and the king wants that to be ours. That is not the same as a republic that settles with a permanent uh, plan for settlement and incorporation to the republic that Argentina started in 1820. Um, not the same by a long shot. In fact, this is why republics were being born in the Americas and breaking away from ludicrous empires who felt that the king was sovereign in places on the other side of the world. Uh, so, uh, and, and, to, and if you also want to look at uh, the fact that the Spanish had been uh, felt entitled to these islands since, since when the Pope decreed in 18, I mean 14, I don't know when the Tordesillas Treaty was created, I think it was um, probably in the 1500s, right after Columbus uh, found the Americas or something, uh, already considered, and uh, you know, uh, the island Spanish, and they, they bought the settlement from the French, and they fought the British and kicked them off the other island, which means they had not earned, they had not won, they had not created sovereignty to these islands, so they did not have sovereignty to these islands. They were maybe disputing, claiming, uh, stating that it was theirs, but they didn't have a built sovereignty, a, a real sovereignty to the island. So this is a blatant lie that is just being told like that, like, like drinking a glass of water in this letter to the United Nations. And then it has this typical inference of degrading, of deworthing uh, the importance of Argentina by concluding, uh, this is typical, I've only, if I could, if I had a dime for every time I've heard uh, British people, uh, argue, argue, arguers, or, or, uh, debaters on Facebook uh, say stuff like this, uh, which I've been introduced to, the type of, these types of statements I've been introduced to through Facebook, through uh, statements that attempt to deworthy um, events or definitions to do with Argentina, and it is that um, that they say they had sovereignty to the islands, which, as I had just explained, they did. And explained they didn't. Some years before the Republic of Argentina even existed. Now, the semantics of this is just so telling to me. Uh, by the use of, of, of the word, of the preposition even, is that a preposition or adverb? Even. Um, they, did, they can't finish that paragraph by saying before the Republic of Argentina was created or before 1916, which is, you know, uh, or whenever they date, they, they, they have to say some years before the Republic of Argentina even existed. I can't tell you how much this echoes the general uh, prejudice and belittlement that is uh, motivating and fueling uh, what I believe has been an attitude by the English-speaking uh, society of civilization since, uh, you know, America, I mean, uh, England ex in exported or extended onto, uh, or rather uh, rebirthed or inherited into the American mind towards the Spanish, all because of this hatred towards the Spanish Empire, which later resulted in our own people in, in the United States thinking in, of the Cubans, of the Filipinos, of the Bolivians, of the Mexicans, of the Guatemalans, of Puerto Rico, of everything that has to do with um, 
with the ex-Spanish Empire and Spanish society, with, with, with the um, assumption that there is a, a reason, and that, that prejudice, that, that, that um, sort of subtle bigotry uh, carries um, or motivates the, uh, 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 the political thinking in people that are involved in, anal uh, you know, in analyzing history or talking about these people or talking about the reasons for America um, and the semantics and the, that we choose through language, through vocabulary, to talk about uh, the ex-Spanish Empire. Uh, with entitlement, with uh, depreciation, with deworthing um, that justifies or that simply um, creates omission and, or substitution for different narratives. You know, we, we don't say that uh, we brutally enforced American um, culture on the Philippines and we prohibited the Filipinos from speaking Spanish and we punished them if they spoke Spanish and there's all this stuff that has to do with how America forged the Philippines away from from being after 300 years part of the Spanish Empire into adopting its new colonizing masters uh, we don't we don't talk about these things we don't talk about if Guantanamo should be returned to Cuba we talk about um, we don't talk about how much Spanish history and culture uh, has to do with Puerto Rico and how they may have the right to regain their um, we don't talk about that part we talk about everything that is American regarding Puerto Rico or we um, well we I don't have to go into length or ex explain too much um, how we think of Central America or not long ago how much more prejudicial and, 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 and bigoted we were towards Mexicans and making jokes in our movies and what have you and then it became politically incorrect but I mean we just look at Trump I mean uh, he just re reinvigorated that whole uh, part of our society and where does that come from you know, where, this is passed from generation to to inference, to assumption, to children that hear parents and adults talk about the French a certain way, the Chinese a certain way, the Japanese a certain way, and the Spanish or Latinos, quote unquote, a certain way. And to me, there is a direct connection to um, to um, uh, to Silas Duncan and how. Uh, he tendered up and destroyed Puerto Luis, the Argentine settlement on on the Malvinas, and why he felt that uh, why the United States didn't feel that there should be another way of resolving. Uh, we like to think that these were the Americas were countries that were republics that were being born together in some kind of uh, blossoming of of new political ideologies, but in reality, even back then, Silas Duncan shows us that America had disdain towards the republics that were also trying to flourish in their independence. A hundred years later, um, w but still part of the same intellect, politically intellectual movement that, w that had been born in France and before France. And Silas Duncan demonstrates that America did not say what happened. Well, you know, um, demand the the ships back or give them a warning and tell them, you know, that you can't accept that that you want to be remunerate remunerate compensated for having been uh, for your our ships being sequestered, our whalers ships being sequestered. No, they gave him permission pretty much to let it all. Uh, just to blast them to kingdom come, and Silas Duncan went and destroyed Puerto Luis. Now, what's interesting is that America played an enormous role in sort of uh, beating down uh, Argentina's um, development of Puerto Luis and the Malvinas, and 
even though we talked about uh, you know this situation in America and our news medias um, we covered the war every single day that happened in 1982 not once not once did I hear mention of uh, America, uh, our government uh, sending Silas Duncan, the destruction of Puerto Luis by Silas Duncan that made way for the British to easily come and grab what was left of Puerto Luis from the Argentinians. We never mentioned it. We, there's not a single place that ever, that, uh, never have, you know, uh, have I heard in any news media or documentaries afterwards, um, even to this day, I've never heard an American documentary that spoke about the Falklands conflict mention America's part in, in, um, in the destruction of Puerto Luis, the Argentine settlement. So I, I think there's an, an, an undissolvable uh, connection to our political, uh, our politics towards Bolivia, towards Venezuela, um, towards Nicaragua, towards Honduras, and towards Argentina insofar as this little chapter in history which has to do with uh, present-day conflict, their present-day conflict with Britain. And to read in this paragraph, some years before the, the Republic of Argentina even existed, just reminds me of what the real problem between, um, you know, the hidden, the secret, the non-talked about, the covered over, the buried, uh, the, the hushed, the real condition, real sociological, uh, social political history, that describes the relationship between uh, con the conjoined relationship of Britain and the United States and Hispanic American countries. There is a relationship you could describe a conjoined for example, if I said to you if you revise in all detail every single event, every single chapter in history, every single thing that really happened, and all of those things that we never study and they never tell you about, like the Silas Duncan incident, uh, regarding, conjointly regarding uh, the history between Britain and the United States and Latin America, or Hispanic and, and America and Brazil, or let's just say Hispanic America, how would you characterize or how would you describe that relationship? You know, you could say, you have a way of describing our relationship with France, collaboration, whatever, there was, we never had, no, never had too many problems with France, so it's easy to talk about a lot of things. Um, but if we had to talk about the relationship, the category, that describes and, 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 and uh, de describes uh, the conjoined uh, relationship of Britain and America with or, or the English political societies of modern history, English political societies of modern history with Hispanic America, primarily uh, of the ex-Spanish Empire excluding Spain, how would you describe that has been? You know, and you start rem remembering, well, there was this incident, there was this event, the British did this in Ecuador, they did that in Peru, they did this uh, with Chile against Bolivia, they did this to Argentina uh, here, and they did this other thing to Argentina there, and they did this against Paraguay, and they were involved in this and that, and then and go all the way to things that describe how Belize came to be, how uh, Guyana... Uh, claimed by Venezuela, Malvinas claimed by Argentina, islands uh, off Peru that you know that um, Britain wanted to keep for the uh, tried to keep as well, um, and a lot of things. And then the time that they, uh, well, all the, the you know the Argentine modern history has um, 
the, the industrial development of Argentina, the English like to say that poor country, it was so rich, one of the richest countries in the world, and then they just, you know, they just, the best of them, the worst of them caught up and they ruined everything. Um, they kind of like to say that Argentina was, uh, remind Argentinians and remind the narrative that Argentina was one of the richer countries in the world at, at the turn of the century, of last century, because they had a big part of creating uh, its economy and its commerce and industry. And, um, but what the Argentinians, because this would be, uh, this would concern the Argentinians to underline, uh, and it wouldn't be so easy to say, well, it's almost like, uh, yeah, we, our country started, you know, having problems and going into crisis right before the, the, the crash of, of 1929, in part because politics, politics started changing and, um, the, the British started pulling out of Argentina, and this was a gradual process that lasted all the way until Perón started underlining things like, you know, the British basically uh, owned things, and, and there were things about, that were criticized about the way the British uh, treated the country, or people, or peasants, or what have you, the aristocracy, as, as related to the aristocracy and the oligarchy, and it was all strongly related to British families and British emperor, and, you know, and things as as the British were were removed from uh, and, and their own interests removed out of Argentina. Argentina hadn't built its own structure of sustenance, and so yeah, uh, but Argentina didn't started declining because they had a problem, like the British would have the British press would have you believe that they're just incompetent and, you know, and Lat Latinos, they're all disastrous and what have you. It started collapsing because this uh, skeleton that was sustained by the British economic power was started getting removed through uh, ideologies, through aired Argentinian ideologies that felt, you know, we're being used, we're being disrespected, we're being humiliated, what have you. We need to build ourselves, we need to make our own country. Except that, well, you know, you just can't have it overnight and you have to really be, in order to substitute, like pulling out a, something from those Chinese games where you pull out the plate really quick and the stack has got to stay vertical. If you want to do that, and if you want to get rich, rid of the of the British and stay more or less uh, on track as as you were be, while the British were running the show, uh, the economic industrial show of the country, and the families were there uh, in relationship with Argentinian politicians and what have you, you have to be able to substitute that with the same momentum, the same. Um, ideas, the same dedication, the same quality, the same details, uh, and, and and substitute um, surrogate and, and similar or substitutable systems, and all of that, of course, did not happen. And it, it, this is pretty much what happened to several Latin American countries. And what is really uh, frustrating is that the in this prejudistic, bigoted kind of uh, tendency by, by English literature in both countries, what gets um, entertained is the idea that the Spanish failed. There is never any explanation to the part the British and the Americans had to do with their, um, you know, their at times uh, schizophrenic political situations where that were happening in socialism versus um, versus socialist ideas uh, the part they had in um, supporting the military juntas against their own people and the genocides against uh, Marxist infiltration which were not you know were 
were uh, fueled and supported by the American and behind the Americans and British always as usual, uh, training the the uh, Argentinian military on how to torture, how to how to deal with infiltration. And, um, the Chicago Boys, infamous now, ways of of uh, bulldozing uh, genuine Latin American um, ideas and um, authentic uh, ways in which they wanted to try running their countries uh, with um, you know with deceitful infiltration through military occupation through dictators or what have you and all the stuff that we talk about and you do you know we we acknowledge as a people all the stuff that america has done to latin america but the narratives and the british narratives as it, for example it relates to malvinas being um being an ex uh part of the same actually uh, allowing themselves to uh, belittle Argentina with its narrative is all part of the same sentiment that is transatlantic, that would have Americans call uh, Mexicans beaners, you know, or, or lazy, or what have you. Um, it's all part of the same, and this is what I find very interesting in the area of psychology and prejudices, because prejudices are, are sort of social cultural manners that get transmitted through, through culture and end up being subconsciously the reason we may be more respectful, resulting in a, in a more respectful treaty or a more respectful political language with one country, while with other countries we feel more uh, justified in tricking or being false, phony, um, selfish, or um, un, un, uh, disrespectful, meaning, you, you know, I'll, I'll call you when I have time kind of thing, you know, instead of saying, well, this relationship is important to us and making them understand that you want to work on this to make sure that everybody's happy. You know, with Latin America, it's always like, allowing ourselves and you know it's I think this is a big part of of what characterizes for example um, the British allowing themselves to say we don't care if 77 country whatever organization of the third world or the Latin American or the OAS or the Mercosur or UNASUR where in all these countries African League of Nations, whatever, they're all signing on in this agreement to incite Britain and Argentina to have talks to resolve the conflict regarding the islands. They don't care. We're just, you know, they're, they're just not that important. It's just another Hispanic country. This is very much part of what happens. It's not the easiest thing to, um, to engage the Argentinians mm -hmm. with. Um, it's not the easiest thing to engage the Argentinians in talking about the psychological and sociological long-term effects of having uh, been humiliated by a war that you knew you were going into and were going to lose, but you didn't want to look at that, and the junta tricked you into thinking that this, you know, and then, um, you know, the country that you thought was your friend does not say, this is really regrettable, we didn't really want a war with you guys, this was done by the junta, let's try to fix our relationship. Instead, um, Britain demonstrates that it silently is coveting something else that, it, that, that is not acknowledged, which is the true reason for why it wanted the war to happen on the islands. And so it's like the lie is over, the friendship is over. Uh, but the Argentinians and Latin Americans still don't understand. They still don't understand that these countries, these uh, Anglo powers, uh, the English language in the Northern Hemisphere, along with other countries in Europe and so forth, are not really their friends. And this may sound kind of like uh, 
silly to say, but it's not silly when you understand the cultural personality of Latin Americans and how in some way they take life as it goes in a way that is uh, that they don't they don't give their own countries the same importance that uh, other countries in Europe or in Asia, the United States, give their own country. Um, I think even Mexico may feel a little bit more respect. That's hard to say with all, this, all the self-killing there is, but, um, you know, when you look at countries like Chile, Argentina, Uruguay, Brazil, um, Paraguay, and Colombia, you know, you see a people that have been pummeled with, with just no, having no reason to believe in themselves anymore. Uh, and they're just making good on the offer of joining the capitalists. Some of them, they're trying to play both fields. They're trying, they're on one half, they're uh, exploring something they don't quite understand. Why can't they find themselves? Why can't they, or not realizing, not recognizing that their own people are sort of culturally brainwashed into thinking that everything that is said in English or comes from the English world is better and must be followed. And the other half that just simply believes that that's how we need to make it is by incorporating uh, ourselves into the um, English-led capitalist financial uh, mechanisms of the world. And this kind of schizophrenia keeps the, keeps these countries from um, from just gathering themselves and walking the straight line of their towards their destiny. Um, and sometimes I wonder if if countries like Britain who are more interested or savvy in the psychological condition of another people or the aftermath, the psychological aftermath of a of a, a, a war event, then America, which is perhaps a little more superficial and just wants, you know, wants to uh, establish how things are going to get done, and, and they're not too concerned about how people are feeling psychologically. I think Britain has a little more uh, savoir faire of what the humanity. And sometimes I wonder if Britain doesn't actually know what it's going to cause, knew what repercussions um, um, having Argentina lose the war so they could move, they could push forward in the South Atlantic and tricking their government and causing continuing bi bipolar, bipolar politics between uh, sovereignly a nationalistic, self-respecting, apparently self-respecting countries that are becoming less with this latest one, but uh, versus uh, liberal capitalism sellouts, you know, that s basically say, okay, fine, we won't talk about Movinas. In fact, uh, Macri was practically, would have given the islands away to Britain uh, had there not been an obvious mass resistance by the population to such an idea, but he started, you could see that he was hinting at that, and I think that uh, Britain actually has enough contempt for Argentina in reality that it kind of sees that and tries to work it or hopes to work it or, you know, hopes to be able to pull better those strings, um, more so than America itself, who just bluntly will will Im impose a certain politic, uh, political policy uh, onto one of these countries or have an operation uh, carried out in Bolivia or, or wherever and, um, and not look too much at with empathy. And, and I'm not sure which is worse because um, it seems to me that perhaps if America were more like Britain in this kind of... Uh, sophistication of, of caring of caring to understand the human psychological aspect and the consequences uh, in a psychological human aspect as Britain does perhaps it wouldn't be so mean for lack of a better word you know where uh, I think Britain actually 
understands better these things and may uh, may coldly um, work with it, you know, or, or 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 build around consequences that it anticipates um, treatment of a people or the consequences, the social consequences of a war would bring uh, to its advantage. I think uh, that if America were more like that, it would say, oh, I didn't realize that we were hurting them so much in, in, in the fulfillment of their own destiny. I never looked at it that way. I was just kind of steeped in the same prejudice I inherited from the British without really thinking about it too much, <laughs> or something like that. I don't know, but I think this this way of understanding the world and um, how the sentiments, the prejudices, the ideas um, that are carried through the mass of society end up affecting the personality in our leaders that consequently um, give shape uh, to decisions and actions or projects that are uh, done with other countries or decisions that are taken towards other countries is very much part of the whole needs to be understood entirely. It needs to be understood how much our, our deworthing of the, uh, the human rights of uh, Latin American countries to fulfill their own destiny with their own authentic making, making and deciding um, their, own, uh, their own manifestations of government uh, is important. I forgot why I, put, I brought that up, but I th I think that if um, we gained conscience, conscientiousness of the value of each country being the owner of its making, of its direction, of its destiny, perhaps we might change our own policy towards countries if we understood how important respect is for another Human, human um, quality for the quality of other human society uh, for the human quality of other societies, and how uh, our ideas about um, is Islamic mo Muslims or our ideas about Hispanics or ideas about um, the Chinese uh, end up leading us to. Uh, really uh, mean, unfair, unjust decisions in our policy. Um, or in other words, we would probably never do anything as just or unfair or abusive towards a country that we felt were, you know, had their, had, had their, their stuff together, like Denmark or, or France. Or, you know, these are countries... Of, we uh, feel that they're entitled to respect, so we wouldn't even think of trying to pull a fast one on them, because we already think of them as more worthy. And the truth is that every country is equally worthy of being respected in their in this integrity. Uh, and um, Latin America shows us that it would require not just Latin America becoming clearer and stronger about uh, consolidating this this um, this construction of their future from now on, but it would also behoove countries like Britain and the United States to say they need help. They are, we're not going to be selfish and take advantage of them not noticing or not knowing. Uh, what the consequences of us doing this might be. We're, that's what respect is about. You do something, you do things for people's own good, not just what they want or what they say they, they require. But when you are wiser and you have more experience, uh, it behooves us to say, I know what this is going to lead to, so I'm not going to do it to them, even though they, they, don't, they don't quite see it themselves, or they can't get over how much they need this. I'm not going to give it to them because they need to develop that on their own, as we did, uh, and as other countries that are uh, more ahead in the world have done themselves. That's what true respect is. Um, okay, anyways.
so that's that. Um, it came out longer than what I thought it was going to be, but not too long. Thanks again. Bye.